Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to point out a few different settings that you'll want to keep in mind when you're working with responsive images. So I have an image element here with a static um, photo that I've uploaded and a lot of the same principles still apply to this element in regards to your um, responsive settings. So if I go over to my responsive builder over here and select the image, I have all of the same options. I have fixed widths available, current minimum widths, uh, I'm sorry, minimum widths, maximum widths, um, and, and it all works in the same way as it would with any other element that you are configuring for a responsive environment. The thing with images though is that things become way more noticeable when element size, when the image element size is resized because of the page size. Um, you can see here as I squish it down, the image gets cut off because it's trying to retain the proportions, um, but there's just not enough room to fit the whole image in, so it's cutting off the sides like that. And if I go really big, it also tries to expand the image, and now we've got cropping on the top and bottom. So because um, things are much more noticeable with an image, you have some extra settings available to you. The first one I want to point out is this checkbox down here, Keep Element Proportions. What Bubble will do is actually resize the dimensions of that image element in order to maintain the original proportions of the image. So if that means making it a lot smaller so that the image you know, uh, retains its dimensions, then that's what it's going to do. Same thing for if you um, expand the page width as well. This is certainly not the original width and height of my image, as we can see here in the builder, the UI builder there, but because we've checked this checkbox here, that's what Bubble's going to do for us. And of course, you also can apply a max width if you'd like so that, you know, if the page is super wide, it doesn't actually go beyond 100% of its original width, or maybe you'll allow it to get a little bit bigger, maybe 110%, but that's it. Um, same thing for the reverse on the minimum side. You can have a minimum so that it doesn't go any smaller than um, a certain percentage of its original width. Now, another few settings that I want to point out is when you're working with dynamic images. So right now I have a static image uploaded where I've just inserted a URL there. Um, but if I replace this with a dynamic value like current user's photo, then you'll see that I now have these run mode rendering options available to me. Okay, so we can stretch the image, we can rescale the image, or we can adjust the element's height. So I'm going to talk about what the difference is between these three. Stretching the image will make Bubble fill the image elements dimensions with that photo, regardless of what the original size of that photo was. So you could experience some stretching, um, you could you can experience some just distortion. So this is probably this is something you want to be careful with. Um, but if you must have, you know, say you have like a a header hero image here at the top of your page, and no matter what um, image you are setting this value to, you want it to fill the entire um, uh, space here for for the dimensions of this element. So I'm going to refresh this page. I've currently set the exact same image to my current user's photo, so we'll see what that looks like. Okay, so see how the image, it's distorted. It's stretched horizontally, but it is filling the entire um, space here for that image because that's what I told it to do. Now if I wanted Bubble to rescale the image, so my dimensions of this element are still very wide, it's still, let's see, 845 pixels wide and 310 pixels um, tall. Now if I did that, what Bubble's going to do is only rescale the image so that um, the elements are still proportional, but you can see how it might not fill the full width of the element because it's kind of reached the max width for this image in order to retain its proportions. Okay, so that's what rescaling will do. Um, adjusting the element height. All right, so let's say everything again here is based off of width. So if I have um, an image element that is only this wide, it will display the image um, proportionally um, to that width only which means that it's going to be a very small image, okay? So it'll keep the width and it'll make the image as tall as it needs to to retain that proportion. If I were to make it this wide, we're going to get a very big image 
um, because in order to keep the proportion for that image, it's not going to stretch it out. It's going to make it as tall as it needs to. See like this in order to keep those proportions. Okay, so those are your three different options there. I highly recommend you just play around with them. Trial and error is often the best way to understand how these different settings affect your photos. And depending on what your layout is doing in your own application, some of these might be better than others um, for different use cases, okay? But keep these three in mind. Also keep your normal width settings in mind, the fixed width, the minimum, the maximum, and then of course, with images, you get this extra setting here to keep proportions as the page is resized. If you have any questions, just leave a comment below. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And of course, subscribe to the channel for more tutorials like this. Thank you so much for watching.